this right now. Long overdue. Finally, into the Soccer Hall of Fame, former New York Cosmo, Washington diplomat, Carmen Mark Antonio. Carmen, congratulations, my friend. Thank you, Anthony. I'm on the 400 driving off, so I hope uh, you can hear me okay. It's all fine. Carmen, when you got that call, what was going through your mind when you were told you're going to be inducted in the fall in the Canadian Soccer Hall of Fame? Well, obviously, uh, it's uh, a sign of accomplishment. And by the way, I, I'm already in the Hall of Fame, to, which is also as important to me as this nomination, this appointment now, because that was, uh, I don't know if you mentioned, but I played on my rookie year. I played with Metro Croatia, and we won the championship that year with the great Eusebio. So I'm already in the Hall of Fame as a team, as a member of a team. Now, this is an individual award, but, you know, soccer, football is a team sport. So to me, this is important. But the other one, the team uh, accomplishment, winning a Super Bowl of my of a soccer bowl, I'm sorry, a soccer bowl with the NSL, with Metro Croatia. Well, Carmen, I'll be honest, you're too humble of a guy, you're too kind of a person to say it, but I'll say it. There was too many people for a number of years asking the question, why isn't Carmen Mark Antonio in the Hall of Fame? I was one of them. I was confused. I was upset at times with the people at the Hall of Fame asking, why wasn't he in? But they did the right thing. They listened to the people. You are in, and this is a great, great moment for you, personally speaking. Let's talk about some of the highlights yourself, individual, Carmen. Was there a game you'll never forget that you thought you had a game of a lifetime? Was there a moment that you scored a goal that will go down as your greatest goal in your career? Well, Anthony, I think uh, the way I'm looking back, it's a bit uh, going to memory lane. But my greatest accomplishment, I must say, is uh, having played, having had a teammate such as uh, Osebio, that, you know, the great Osebio that just left us, uh, as you know, in January, passed away. The great Osebio that was uh, the golden boot in uh, the World Cup in 1960. I mean, I grew up, well, you know, admiring the Black Panther, uh, Cruyff, you are Cruyff from the Ajax, the great Ajax team, Ajax or Ajax, I don't know how you do the right pronunciation, I think it's Ajax, in, Ajax in, in Italian, Ajax in English, but, you know, with the Dutch, Clockwork Orange, the Dutch team, uh, having played the... Uh, you know, with Ivaí Ferreira, that was known uh, as the prince in Brazil, and then he played with Niskus and uh, and all the against uh, Pelé and against uh, Georgi Best, and you know some of the greatest uh, players in the 70s and 80s. I think that goes for me as the greatest accomplishment in my career. Carmen, let's talk about growing up as a young man uh, with some of the youth clubs you played for. Was there uh, a youth coach that you will never forget and you think about now being inducted into the Soccer Hall of Fame that means so much to you still to this day, that nurtured you, not only as a player on the field, but as a person off the field? Who would that be? Well, first and foremost, I must say that that coach, it includes to become a coach, it's me. Because, uh, you know, that's something that I always wanted to do, become a professional soccer player. I grew up, as you know, in Italy, and uh, I came to this uh, great country of ours, Canada, as a young, young man, uh, young 14-year-old uh, 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 youth. And, but I grew up, uh, you know, watching the great Juventus and Sivori, Omar Sivori, the great Argentinian that played for Argentina and then also went on to play for Italy at the time. And, you know, I kind of learned, and that's what I want to say to the young kids that are listening to, to your show, that you become your first coach in two ways. One, looking at the great players of today, like the Messi, Ronaldo, and try to emulate them, copy them, and then practice. My greatest coach was the wall, because as a kid growing up, I was always practicing you know, street soccer when I was growing up in Italy with friends, and then 
when I came to Canada, I was picked up uh, against the wall. Like, you know, I would uh, hand uh, hundreds of times to keep, keep up. So that, that was my first coach was uh, the, the wall uh, at my backyard, in the schoolyard I, I grew up in. And then, you know, my first coaches in Canada was, you know, Fiorici Pagliuso. Uh, there was uh, uh, with Toronto Italia. But before that, there was uh, John uh, uh, Paulus. John Paulus was my youth coach as a 14, 15 year old. That I didn't even know until they told me when I when I was inducted. Uh, they told me I was six times North American champion, and my first time was uh, as a 14 year old with the Beavers in, in Toronto with John Paulus. Uh, we became Canadian champion at that time. You know, then uh, and then we went on with the professional Markovic with the Metro Scotia had a big influence. Gordon Bradley with the Washington Diplomats had a great you know, influence on me. And uh, Eddie Firmani with the Cosmos and uh, with the uh, Montreal Manning. I think those guys, one way or the other, they formed me as a, as a player, but above all, they formed me as a, as a human being, as a person. Carmen, you had the opportunity to represent the great country of Canada on a few occasions. How did that feel the first time you put that jersey on and play in World Cup qualifying matches? Well, Anthony, my greatest regret is, is not having represented my country, my adoptive country, Canada. As you know, I, 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 I equate Canada as my stepmother and Italy as my mother, natural mother. And I love both dearly, just that mother and mother to me, Italy and Canada, uh, uh, my passion uh, uh, as a citizen, as somebody that grew up in this great country of ours. And one regret is not having played for Canada enough times. I thought at the prime of my career, for one reason or another, I didn't get the call when I should have got the call. I mean, I, I you know, the biggest regret was in 1982 when Italy won the World Cup. Canada, I was at the prime of my career playing in Washington, D.C. with the diplomats, and then at that year, in 82, I went on to play with, uh, with Montreal Manic. And, you know, I was always playing. I was a starter in both teams. I was at my prime at the time. I was 26, 27, 28. And yet, I, for whatever reason, uh, clerk coach, I can't remember his first name, uh, but he chose when we had to qualify for the World Cup. I went to pre-qualifying, and I got called, and I got injured, I only played two, three games. But when it came to qualifying in Cuba for the final round, I didn't get the call, and that's my greatest regret, because in 1981, I think it was the end of 81, I had one of my greatest years with Washington with uh, Montreal Manic, and I thought I could, call, I could have contributed to the team, but yet he chose to, to call two or three amateur guys, and one of the guys that I dropped, uh, the two or three professionals that he dropped, it was me, Shutes, Daniel Shutetsky, we were teammates at the time with uh, Manic, and I thought we both deserved to be in the squad. Carmen, let's talk about now today, 2014. You've seen the game change so much. Uh, over the years, especially here in Canada. And obviously, I'm pretty sure uh, you're as heartbroken as many Canadians are that we have not been back to the World Cup uh, since 86. And many, many issues uh, that are still uh, a, a big-time problem in this country. You have been playing in this country in the past. You have coached a bit. You have been at the grassroots level with youth teams to help out. In, in your honest estimation, Carmen, do you feel that there is still a very big steep hill to climb to even get uh, to, uh, you know, a situation where they could qualify for a World Cup come Russia or Qatar? Well, uh, I, I believe that, uh, you know, Canada has a long way to go as far as getting implementation of the system in place. I mean, I've been in this uh, country of ours since I was 14, so I'll be 60. But, <laughs> This year I'll be 60, so that, that's, how uh, many years is that? Uh, 40, 46, yep. 46 years, and I haven't seen much growth as far as development of, of inter 
international players and to play at the international level you gotta build international players and in Canada unfortunately we don't have the system I mean the closest we came was in 82 and we did qualify in 86 but because there was a couple of players like myself and Bob Yahushi, Wes McLeod and, and all the players of that time that grew up in the, in the old NSL, so we were rubbing shoulder with the professional, and that's how close we came to, to, to qualify. So we need players, we need a system where players are going to be youth players, are going to be in a professional environment. So to get that, we need a professional league, a Canadian league. Even call it semi-professional. I don't care, but something that resembles somewhat of a national league, semi-pro professional where kids could play, where you could, you know, pay decent salaries, where you could get professional coaches, where the kids could develop. Because we have, we have the MLS was doing a great job with the three franchises, the Toronto. FC and, and, and Vancouver and, and Montreal, but that's not enough. We have to have something cross country that will be a second tier where professional players, after their career, can make a living coaching the game that they've learned. I have uh, to choose a profession that has nothing to do with football, with soccer, because I cannot make a living. You know how much I love coaching and teaching. But unfortunately, I had to have a, a family, you know, to, to raise, and I had to make a living. And so I only coached for a bit of time. But we need to invest into the game to get the result. And I don't think we do too much of a good job of that, of investing and having a, our own league to get, to get to the bottom line, which is qualifying Canada and producing international soccer players. Carmen, uh, in the fall, you'll be inducted into the Soccer Hall of Fame with some of the best this country has ever seen play. And, and guys like Bobby Arushi, uh, John McGrain, and so many others, it's going to be great that you'll be inducted in there. But when it comes time that you're going to have to go up to the podium and you have pretty sure got all your notes ready uh, to thank many, many people, is, is there a parent? Is there a, a, a sibling? Is there uh, someone that you reflect and think back to and say, thank you. Thank you for everything that you provided for me. Who would that be, Carmen? Well, again, uh, you know, first of all, my, my parents, because my, they always encouraged me, my dad, he's always encouraged me to be lost the game, and he never played at any, any level, uh, but he loves the game, and he's always encouraged me but I gotta thank myself because Anthony I told you I my passion as a kid growing up was to play in the Serie A for Juventus. Well, I didn't do it with Juventus, but I did play with the Metros Croatia, with Toronto Italia, with the uh, Russian diplomats, with the New York Cosmos, with with Manic, and I played against some of the top players in history of the game, and I did that through hard work, through practice, through dedicating my heart and soul into the game. So, you know, this goes to, and it, it will be for, more for uh, this induction. It's not so much for me, it's so more for my kids and for my grandchildren to come because it's a way of showing that through hard work, doesn't matter if it's football, soccer, or any type of job, is that if you put your soul and heart into something, you will accomplish something. And this is, you know, this is the reward at the end. Not of being recognized, recognized as, a, as a, a soccer player, a professional soccer player that did something in this country. Carmen, as we close it out, we really appreciate your time, but I can't let you go without giving me the number one highlight in your playing career. What would that be? My number one highlight was my first professional game in the NSL at Yankee Stadium <laughs> in, uh, in uh, playing against the Cosmos. And next thing I know, I kind of froze just before kickoff, just opposite me, because I played midfield, as you know, there was a great Pelé. 
and uh, I even remember we lost that game for one at Yankee Stadium, and that moment to me was to say, hey, I'm here, I, I've accomplished something, I was only 20 at the time. Carmen, that's outstanding to hear that.